In this lesson, we'll talk about map extraction in Mudbox. So we have our high-res mesh here. We need to be able to get that high-res detail out into whatever other application that is we're using. We can't normally use millions of polygons, and so we need to reproduce that using some sort of a displacement map or a normal map that's then applied to a lower resolution piece of geometry. So we need to actually calculate those. So to do that, we'll go back up to Extract Texture Maps, which we've looked at briefly in other lessons. You can see we have a number of different kinds of maps that we can generate. You can do an ambient occlusion map. You can do a vector displacement map. Let's go ahead and just uh, choose these last three. And so we'll start to set these up. For a vector displacement map, we want to set the target as the low res mesh. So let me go ahead and remove that. So our T-Rex at level zero. We want to generate one map for all targets. For our source, we'll go ahead and add the T-Rex as well. And you can click on this to select any other level that you want to use to calculate that detail from. Okay. Now the vector displacement maps, again, as we looked at earlier, they use the subdivision uh, method, so we don't have anything to choose here. We can choose an image size. We'll use a 2K. All right, and an aliasing, we can use that if we want to. Now for this, since we're going to be actually using this to reproduce this on a model, instead of relative tangent, let's use absolute tangent, since we're not going to be using this as a stamp or stencil, uh, but it is going to be deforming. So we can also preview this as vector displacement map. So let's go ahead and choose a file name for this. So I'm going to make this an open EXR, and we can call this Rex Vector Displace, and go ahead and save that. Uh, we're not going to be using it as a stamp, so we don't need to add that. Now we've got that set up. We can go down and check displacement map, so a regular displacement map. You can see that's already actually set up for us. We have got the subdivision method selected. These are both levels, different levels of the same mesh, so that subdivision method will work. You can also use ray casting if you want to do that, get a best guess for search distance. Okay, we've got that settings. It's brought over. We'll go ahead and add a file name, and we can just call this. Uh, we can make this another uh, another format here, and we can just call this Rex Displace, and we can save that. A displacement map will be used at render time to be able to render that detail. If we want to see it in real time in the viewport or in like a game engine, we can use a normal map. And so I can select a normal map. We've still got the same settings here. We're using level 0 and level 6. Okay. We've got the methodology is the same. If we want on this one, if we want to use subdivision, we can do that. Okay. We've got the compatibility for the normal map. And we'll set that to go ahead and set uh, to Maya and soft. Okay, tangent coordinate space is fine. You can see we've also got object and world. We're going to be deforming this, so we'll go ahead and leave that on tangent. And let's go ahead and choose a file name for that. We'll call this Rex Normal. And we can choose a format for that. And so let's go ahead and save that. And so now we've got all three of these selected and all three of these set up. So now all we need to do is go in and hit Extract. So now it's going to spend some time calculating those. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video as that just goes through the process of calculating those and we'll come right back as soon as that finishes up. Okay, so just finished. This is Map Extraction finished successfully. You can see the UV region here, you can see the tile ID, and then it says we've got the normal map, the displacement, the vector displacement all created. Okay, so let's go into our image browser and actually take a look at those. So we'll close this out. Let's jump into our image browser and navigate to our folder. So this is a folder where we saved our images. Now let's just take a look at these. So here's our displacement map, our regular displacement that we created. So you can see the sort of the muscle shapes, and you can also see some of the higher resolution shapes um, in there. And we can come in and look at that. You can see a little bit closer some of that detail that's come through. The normal map is here, so you can see what that looks like. You can see all that detail created for the normal map, and you can see that uh, all of these are based on the UVs that we have laid out for that. Uh, for that guy. Okay, and then we have our 
displacement, vector displacement here. Again, we can hit plus and minus to see some of the different stops here to get that detail. Okay, so that one's going to look a little bit strange. And then an occlusion map there. So let's go back into our 3D view and then we can take a look here at our layers. You can see we have a vector displacement. Let's actually take our mesh down to a lower level. So let's go ahead and take it down to level zero. Okay. So down here we can see that we have our maps being displayed here. Now it doesn't look as good because we don't have the uh, the viewport filters aren't able to work as well on this low res because we're working with our just previewing our maps here. Okay, but you can see how we've not now got under bump we've got our displacement and under normal we've got our uh, normal here and then we can go ahead and export those out. Or we can just, uh, if we send this over to Maya, that will come uh, loaded up in there. Okay. So that's how we can come in and start to extract our texture maps. You can also, if you want to start uh, bringing in a displacement to use to start sculpting, you can also do that here, sculpt using map. And you can go ahead and bring in uh, different kinds of displacement maps to actually uh, begin sculpting on. So if we were to go ahead and uh, take maybe the vector displacement map and sculpt using map, we could get that detail all back and begin our sculpting process again. All right, so that is a look at extracting texture maps. Okay, it's all going to be located here under this. You can see we now have this extraction operation, and it actually has saved all of the data that we put in there. If we want to use that again, we can use it again. We can also uh, delete this particular extraction operation, or we can name it as well. Okay. And so in the next lesson, what we want to do is to go ahead and, and look at how we can actually transfer detail, so scope the detail between one mesh to another mesh that may have a totally different topology. So we'll take a look at how we can do that in the next lesson.